different parts here. This is the first toggle we used. It's connected directly to the piston pin and it's just a small fabricated part. This is in order to change the axis of the wrist pin which is going the wrong way for what we want to do. This one was a little floppy so we've gone to version 2 which is welding one piston on top of the other. We've cut away major portions of the piston that weren't needed and just welded it on with the pin turned 90 degrees to the other pin and that gives us the axis we want. This is the coupling nut that goes to our connection to the beam and I've just welded a small portion of the rod in there to connect onto the piston pin just like that. I get a little shot of Jack here, smiling face. <laughs> well here's our good old Chevy engine block. All cleaned up. At least one bore looks good. And what we've done is shorten the crank so we only have the, the throws we need and uh, in this case three main bearings and we put zerk fittings on everything so we can grease it occasionally. Here we have the rod installed. You can see it spins nice and freely. Cute little axis changing set up there. And we're ready to rock and roll. Well, here's our high tech fabricated base. Of course, it was fabricated in place on the machine and then taken off for painting. Well, here we are. Oops. Sitting on the base. Ready to install the motor and put the anvil and arm on. Looking good. Now we've got it assembled here with the uh, nut that connects to the push rod for the hammer. As you can see it pivots the opposite way of what the normal wrist pin in the hammer does, which is why we had to go through all that bullshit. Sure. We, we found that we needed this shoe on here in order to keep the slack in this side of the belt. Otherwise, the belt tended to contact here and heat up the pulley quite a bit, and it tended to be a little grabbier. Here's our actual clutch mechanism. It's just a ball bearing mounted on an arm. takes up the slack in the belt right there. It works very smooth. And we picked up a few of the head bolt holes here in our anvil block in order to bolt this down nice and solid. And we just happened to have some nice big long bolts that came out of my deck. Yeah, yeah, these, these were freebies now. <laughs> Well, here we are, just about all put together. And roll it over there, Jack, to show what the action is. It raises up about seven inches without the springs whipping. It actually goes quite a bit more when the springs are whipping. And that is... <laughs> they're hard to push, but... Uh, when it's flailing, they really whip. Well, here we are, completely assembled. Ready to move it in and do some forging. I'll run over a few of the details here, like our little trailer springs. They're locked tight at the back, so they can't uh, parallelogram. A 
the, the hold downs that we decided on. We've also got a, a little bit of a hand anvil in front here, which is real nice when you get done forging something to straighten it out there. And this is Jack's high-tech spring bracket to return the treadle. And we'll take a look at the action here on the uh, clutch. Go ahead and, yeah, just like that. Works great. Go ahead and turn the machine on, Jack. Now the motor's running. Go ahead and take up a little slack. You've got very good control. Okay, now turn the torque. 